welcome to the first Harp at Home online harp workshop. This is the first of eight workshops where I'll be teaching you some of my favourite tunes on the Scottish lever harp and each workshop will be uploaded at 7pm UK time every Monday. They'll be uploaded onto my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash harp at home remember to subscribe and also to my website harpathome.com once they've been uploaded at 7 p.m. every Monday, they'll remain online, meaning that you can catch up and re-watch re whenever you want to. So these workshops are mainly aimed at people who play harp already and I'll be teaching the tune by ear. Now, I know not everybody is comfortable learning by ear, so if you do need the music, pause this video now, head over to harpathome.com and you can purchase an instant PDF download of the music. In fact, I'd actually encourage you all to do that after the workshop. Um, there's a small cost for the PDF, it's three pounds, but that three pounds helps me support myself um, as a freelance musician and teacher in what is rather challenging times to be a freelancer. Um, I've had lots of work cancelled this summer, so this little amount just helps me on my way to being creative and carry on doing these workshops and my performing. So each download is £3 and I'd just like to apologise, I'm sorry it's in pounds sterling. I'm a small business with a small website so it's not possible for the website to handle more than one currency but the actual payment function once you get to the checkout part is handled by PayPal and PayPal of course will be able to convert the £3 into your home currency. So it means wherever you are in the world you should be able to download this music. So in fact, let's head over to the website harpathome.com now for some tips on how to help you on your way with these online workshops. Okay folks, so if you go to www.harpathome.com, we'll take you to this website. This is actually my professional website, but there's a Harp at Home page there. Scroll down, we've got an introduction section and a wee accordion bit they call it, where you can click and that will give you lots of information on the workshops themselves. Click it again and it will shut. So here we have the Harp at Home mailing list. Please consider joining this. Um, I'll send you weekly emails, just letting you know when the video lessons have gone live. Then we scroll down, we have our introduction video, which you might've seen already. It's worth watching if you haven't. Down here is where all the workshops are going to be loaded onto the website. Now I'm gonna show you some kind of tips about following YouTube videos. So I'm going to actually use the main introduction. So of course you press the big red play button. Please, when you're doing the workshops, make good use of the pause button. If you think I'm going too fast, pause and play through bits again. Of course, you can also scroll through, fast forward to bits that you want to look at, or rewind if you want to remind yourself of what was happening. Now, when you'll see them on the video on the website, the videos will actually be quite small down here, so you might want to watch them as bigger videos. In that case, press this little square kind of detached square in the bottom right hand corner. That will take you to full screen. Okay, so there we go, full screen. It will then appear as a little kind of detached cross. Click that again and you exit the full screen. Now, a very useful function that not many people know about with YouTube videos is that you can change the speed without, alter without altering the, um, the tuning. So you press the little settings, go click playback speed and you can slow down the video and if you wanted to, you can also speed it up so it's really, really fast and it maintains the pitch so that means that you can play along with it. Now, if you want to have a wee chat with me, these videos will be going live at 7pm UK time on Mondays. If you click the actual YouTube bit, you can watch the videos directly on YouTube. And when it's a premiere, this section over here on the right comes up with a chat window. And I'm planning on being there on the chat window. So yeah, come and have a word. Uh, let me know if you're enjoying it. Um, if, yeah, any questions you have and I'll have a wee chat to you. And just before I start to play it actually, 
make sure you watch to the end of each of the videos um, as I'll be having a wee blether at the end um, just to kind of tell you what I've been up to and things because yeah it's good to talk as they say. So today's tune um, is actually a tune that I've been teaching over the past year. Um, I've taught at quite a lot of workshops and um, so apologies if you've been in a workshop and you know it already but well it's such a great tune it's a fantastic 2-4 march and I just want to share it all with you. So I know it as being called Wa Saw the 42nd and it's the pipe march of the song with the same title. And the original song that I'm most familiar with refers to the 42nd Highland Regiment, the famous Black Watch, and speaks about them walking down the Broomy Law about to board a ship to head off to war. And well, the Broomy Law is actually a part of the riverside in, in, on the River Clyde in Glasgow. So it's about just a few miles that way. And um, so it's kind of a bit of a local tune, which I think is why I kind of feel a bit of a connection with it. It's also known as another title, a song um, called Wa Would You Fecht For Charlie? And that the words in that speak about the Jacobite rising of the famous 1745. So I'll put the lyrics of both versions in the PDF and I'll also pop in a few links into the PDF um, to various uh, versions of people singing and playing it on YouTube. So yeah, this is how it sounds. Second war saw them Ganoa, war saw the forty second marching to the broomy law. Some of them had boots and stockings, some of them had made the fall, some of them had tart and played his marching to the broomy law. So there you go, and we had a wee, wee bit of a listen there to the fantastic Scots singer Iona Fife singing the lyrics for us. Thank you, Iona, for kind of doing that for us. Just so, I guess, just to show you what it sounds like as a song. Iona is a great Scots singer, so please check out her website, which is here. And really, uh, she's doing a lot of online stuff actually just now. So she's worth uh, liking on Facebook and following on YouTube, etc., for keeping in touch with what she does. So now I'm going to head over there to teach you the tune. Remember, stay along um, after, and I'll have a wee blather after we've learned the tune. Here we go. Okay, so we've moved over to the lovely green screen. Hopefully this will help you see the colors more clearly on my beautiful starfish Glenel harp. So we're going to learn Wa Saw the 42nd. This is a 2-4 pipe march or a, also a song and it's an A major. So that means you need to have your F sharp, your C sharps and your G sharp levers enabled on your harp. Now, if your harp is like mine and it's tuned to E flat, that means that you'll have the A lever, E, B, F, C and G lever all engaged, all on. If your harp is tuned to C major, that means you have your F, your C and your G levers on. So I'm going to play you the first part of the tune. This uh, tune has two parts to it. And um, yeah, I'm going to play you the first part. I think it's always really good just to kind of hear a tune a few times over. So I'm going to play you the first part twice to help it get into your mind. And that will help you when you're starting to learn the tune. Have a listen. Tunes in A major and we're starting on 
and A. It's going to be the A above middle C. So we're going to have our third finger on A and we're going to follow on with another two notes, B and C right after it. So you've got three, two, one on A, B and C sharp. Have a listen to the first little part. Okay, so our first collection of notes, we're playing our A once and then we're playing up A, B, C sharp. Okay, so A and then up from A. So you end up with two A's in a row. Let's have a go. Let's try together after two. One, two. Set our fingers back off and we'll go again after two. One, two. Nice. Okay, one more time for good luck. We're right at the start of the tune. One, two. Follow that with another three notes. We're going to go up from the B. I'm going to let you into a wee kind of tip for this tune. There are no D's in the melody at all of this tune. So I want you to avoid the D at all costs. Okay, that will help you remember what notes to go to. Okay, so now we're going to be going up three from B. Okay, but missing out the D because we don't use the D. So B, C sharp and E. Just three, two, one. Have a listen. So we're just going up those three notes. Let's try together after two. One, two. One more time after two. Up from B. No D. One, two. Lovely. So when we put those two bits together, it sounds like this. Okay, so we have A, up three from A. And then up three from B, but remember no D. Okay? After two, let's put those together. This is our first phrase. One, two. Up from B. Nice work. Let's go for it again. One, two. So that's our first phrase. Now each part in this tune has four phrases, so we're dividing it into four sections. That was our first phrase. We're going to move on to our second phrase. Have a listen first. So again, this starts on the A, and we're going to use our third finger to play the A. Then we're going to play another A with our second finger. Quite often when I'm thinking about fingering, if I've got two notes that are the same in a row, I'll change my fingers, okay? This is especially true in fast tunes. To be honest, this isn't really a fast tune, so, and you'll all, I, I kind of broke my rule as well at the first phrase, but I'm kind of half sticking to my own rules for this one. So I'm changing my finger for those two A's. I'm using my third finger and then my second finger. Let's just try those after two. Third finger, then second finger, two A's. One, Two. Good. Now we're going to go down four from F, but remember, no Ds. So miss out the D. We have F, E, C sharp and B. So F sharp, E, C sharp, B. Four down, missing out the D. After two. Or actually, it sounds like this. Have a listen first. Let's try it together. One, two. Let's put the two A's on before it now. I'm going to count to two. One, two. Let's go again. Reset after two. One, two. One more time for good luck. Two A's, down four from F, missing out the D. One, two. So that's our second phrase. Let's try putting it with the first phrase. Just to remind you, the first phrase, we had A, B, C. Played an A, then we went up three from A, and then we went up three up from B. But remember, no Ds. Let's put those two phrases together. One, two. One, two. Down four from the F sharp, missing out the D. 
lovely work. Okay, listen to the third phrase. Okay, so the third phrase is exactly the same as the first. You'll notice this in a lot of Scottish tunes. It's a common structural pattern. The third phrase is the same as the first. So let's have a go at that third phrase, or other words, the first phrase. So we have A, up three from A, and then up from the B. After two, one, two. Great. So let's try three phrases now, okay? So we're nearly done learning the first part already. This is good work. So A, B, C. Let's go from the start. A, up three from A, and then up three from B. One, two. Two A's. Down from the F sharp. Third phrase, same as the first. Up from the A, up from the B. Great. So remember, we're not playing this E at all. Always remember, no D's. After two, from the start. One, two. So this is our ending or final phrase, the fourth phrase. So we've moved, moved higher up the heart now. We're going to be at this top A. This is the highest note that we're going to play in this tune. Our second finger, we're just going to really, for just now, we're just going to use our thumb and our second finger. We're going to split this into two sections just now. Have a listen. So we have four notes there. Thumb on F, second on the F sharp. Sorry, thumb on the A, second on the F sharp. We're going to play our F sharp and then our A. So we've got F, A. Then move your second down to the E. And E, A. So F, A, E, A. After two together. One, two. Once again. One, two. Great. Now our next three notes are going to be C sharp, A and B. If you were doing these bits independently, you might be tempted to finger it like this. So with your thumb on the C sharp, third on A and second on B. Because that makes sense when you're looking at it individually. But we want our fingering to flow to help the melody to flow. So we're going to try and connect these bits up and we don't want to be hopping that thumb down. Okay. If you put it together with a bit before, you would be hopping your thumb down to that C sharp. That's a big jump there. It's a jump of a sixth. What I want you to try to do is to conserve the energy there with your fingers. We're going to use two, one. And our second is out anyway. So pop your second, stretch it down to that C. Now place your third in the A. We're going to go C sharp, A, and use our second for the B. So we're conserving the energy. Our second is down there anyway. So we'll use that for those three notes. Let's try that together nice and slow. One, two. Second down to C sharp. One more time. One, two. One more time. One, two. So that's all of the first part of the tune. Let's try playing it together. I'll just quickly remind you of what the first parts are. So three, two, one on A, B, C. We have an A and then up three from A. Then we're going to go up three from B, no Ds. We have two A's. Try playing the second one with your second finger. Down from the F sharp, remember no Ds. Third phrase, same as the first. Up from the A from the B. Now you're ending. Stretch your second and third down and finish in the B. Okay, let's try playing that together. We'll try it twice in a row. One, two. You have 
from A, up three from A, up three from B, two A's, down four from the F sharp. Three from A, up from the B. Now you're ending. Stretch that down to C and A and finish on the B. Good, okay. Remember, you can pause the video and you can rewind it, okay? And you can also use the slow down function if you want to take these little sections when we're all playing together slower, okay? Let's go for that again, twice through, and then we'll go on to the second part. In fact, I'm going to play it twice through and I'm going to go straight on to the second part, which I'll play twice, just to start to get that going round your head. After two, one, two. Okay, so let's learn that second part. Again, it has four phrases, and you might have recognised that the fourth phrase, the ending phrase, was exactly the same as the fourth ending phrase as the first part. So that's the bit that went stretching your second and third down. Okay, so it actually shouldn't take us too long to learn this part. There's a lot of repetition in it. Okay, and you know that phrase already. So we've only got three to go. And, well, if you know about that old trick of the third phrase being the same as the first phrase, you'll then have worked out that you actually only have two new phrases to learn. So, we shouldn't take long with this. Now, there are six little important notes in this that come around again and again on the first, second and third phrase. Have a listen. That's our important little phrase that comes again and again. So, let's have a look at that first. We're going to split it into two. Second on C, thumb on E. So we're going to play our C sharp and then our E. So second and C, thumb on the E. So we're going to have a C, E. Then I want you to take your second finger and play that E. The reason we're doing that is that we're getting our hand kind of starting to move up to what will be the next bit, which is up three from F. So we have C, an E with your thumb, an E with your second. Place on all three and we're going to go up from F. So we're going up F sharp, G and A there. That will sound like this. Up from F. Let's try that together after two. It's a key little phrase that. One, two. Up from F that a few times after two one two up from f sharp one more time for good luck one two okay so that appears in the first phrase the second and the third phrase have a listen we're going to follow it now with three little notes Second on E, thumb on F sharp. We're going to go E, F, E. Let's try those three notes after two. One, two. Okay, let's add them on. So it will sound like this. Up from F, E, F, E. 
Let's try together after two. One, two. Up from F. Three little notes. E, F, E. One more time. One, two. Great. Our second phrase starts with the same little pattern. Up from F. Now we're going to use our second and our third to play C sharp E. So after you go up from the F, have those second and third heading down to the C and the B, the C B, sorry. So that will sound C B. Let's try that phrase. One, two. Up from F. C B. One more time. One, two. Lovely. Let's put the first and the second phrase together now. So we have E, F, E as the first variation. One, two. E, F, E. C, B. Guess what? Third phrase is the same as the first. So we're going to do the one ending E, F, E after two. One, E, F, E. And our fourth phrase, remember I said to you earlier, is the same as the fourth phrase from the first part. So that's the part when our thumb's in the top A, second in is F, we go F, A, E, A, stretch second and third down, C, A, B. Told you it wouldn't take long to do that second part, we've done it already. Let's just quickly go through it again though. Okay, so we have C, E, E and up from F. Then we have E, F, E. Our pattern again, C, E, E, up from F. Now we have C, B. Third phrase, same as the first. So C, E, E, up from F. E, F, E, ending phrase, same as the first part. Stretch down, C, E, Lovely. Let's try all of that twice through that second part. After two. One, two. C, B. Ending. twice through. One, two. Okay, let's see if we can do all of the melody of the tune now. So remember your first part, just to quickly remind you, with A, B, C, it's an A, then up three from A, up three from B, remember no Ds, stay away from those Ds. Two A's, down four from the F, no D. A and up three from A, up three from B. Ending. Okay, 
so let's go for twice through the first part and twice through the second part. After two. One, two. Hope you managed that okay remember you can pause and you can remind uh, rewind the video so um yeah let's have a look at the second part in a second i hope you're finding this okay i know i'm repeating bits a lot but it's i guess it's quite a challenge teaching uh, to camera because i'm not able to see what you're doing and what level you are normally in workshops i kind of react to to who, what my participant, participants are doing and how they're getting on correcting you all. But um, yeah, I can't see you. So don't worry if you're making any, any mistakes because I won't see you. It's great. <laughs> so aye, let's have a look at the set, at the left hand for the first part. Um, just to warn you, I've just replaced these bass strings. So I did tune before the start of the video. They might well be out already and they will also probably sound a little bit jangly just now because they've not quite settled in. So have a listen to what I'm going to be doing for the first part. in an A octave, a split A octave. This kind of represents the drone of the pipes, okay, the scurrile of the pipes, and we've got an A octave. So we're going to have our thumb on the A and our fourth finger on the A. We're going to go high A, low A, high A. So you've got high A, low A, okay, so three A's. Let's try that together after two. One, two. happen every time you have two A's in a row and if you think about it first phrase you have two A's in a row at the start second phrase you have two A's at the start as well third phrase same as the first so you've got three opportunities to get this okay so we're gonna go it's gonna go the thumb is gonna go with the first A and then the bottom note of your octave plays by itself so it plays between the A's and then we go again together so we have together, low A, together. And that happens every time. So we go again here, together, low A, and down. Together, low A, together. Reset and we'll try it again. So your two, I guess your two gut A's, then your bass A. Because that's a nice kind of over, you know, it just kind of has that drone effect. If 
but if you want to add something else in, I'm, I'm quite known for my kind of syncopated notes, and I'm going to use a kind of syncopated cluster chord. Have a listen to what is going on with that first phrase. We have a three note cluster chord, which is just warming that up. And the three notes we're going to use are B, C sharp and E. And if you look at your right hand, that's the same notes that your right hand are going to be on. So when you're playing up B, C and E there with your right hand, you're going to play all three the same notes at the same time. Have a listen. So the that cluster chord is going to go with the B, the B, C and E. So our hands are in the same shape. Try it after two with me. One, two. Okay, so the challenge is getting your hand up to that cluster chord. So the B, C, E comes with the B of the B, C, E in your melody. Let's see if we can fit that in. One, two. Cool. Let's try again. And actually, let's try playing all of the first part because it's the same left hand for the third phrase because the third phrase has the same melody. After two from the start. So octophase on first, second and third phrase. And our B, C and E cluster chord on our first and our third phrase. One, two. Cluster. E, Loi, Re. We get another chance here for this cluster chord. Nice. Let's go for that again. One, two. something in now for the second phrase. When we're coming down in the E, we're going to add in an E and a G, so an E third. That's going to happen. It's going to follow the same rhythm as that cluster chord is, did, so it's going to happen with the C sharp. So we have an E and a G, and we play the C. that phrase. One, two. E and G. One more time. One, two. E and G. Let's go for it one more time. One, two. Let's add that in to the other two phrases. So we now have left hand for three phrases in total. Octave phase and our B, C and E cluster chord for the first and third phrase. So let's get those A Jones going. After two. One, two. B, C, and E. Sorry, these bass notes are really jangly. <laughs> After two. One, two. Cluster. Two A's. Your E and G. Your A octaves. Cluster. Great. Okay. So, let's move on to our final phrase. We're going to have... every beat we're going to have a left hand pattern. Now I'm going to give you two options for this. If you want to keep it straightforward, you can just keep it a straight octave. So we're going to have a D octave, a C sharp octave, a D octave and an E octave. So it was D, C sharp, D and E. Okay. You've got to keep your hand flat out with this. If we need, we need to do what I like to call is considerate damping. So you're going to play the first octave, pat your hand on nice and firmly, play your next one, pat your hand on, slide up to the D, pat hand and up to the E. So that we're damping it not as an effect, but damping it considerately 
considerately, I can't even say that, no, yeah, that word to me. So that the harmony doesn't interrupt the next one. That just sounds awful like that, especially with these new strings. But you need to be having that flat hand out to damp. And it's going to come on the beat. So after two, have a listen. One, two, D and C sharp and D and E. Okay, so we have the D comes with the A sharp. Your C sharp comes with the E. Your D comes with the C sharp. And your E comes with the B. Now another way that you can kind of almost feel how that comes you're going to have a left hand note every time you play your second finger. So with your finger, your second finger, your second finger, and with your second finger. Yeah. So it's another way of kind of trying to kind of get to grips with that bit. Now that was straight octaves. If you want to push yourself, you can have a look at, um, um, in fact, this is the version that I've got on the music. I've not got the straight octaves, but I've got a D uh, as being a D octave. Then a C10, so you're widening your hand out to grab the C sharp and the E. Okay, so we've got a D octave. This is the advanced version, C10, so widen your hand out. Get it back to that D octave again, so your hand's coming in again. And then an E and a D, creating a kind of open E7. Okay, so it keeps it a little bit edgy that. So that will sound like this. that warmth then you're back to the octus and then the open e7 there so okay so just try whatever version you want straight octus or those tenths and seventh version after two let's try together so set your hands up one two one more time after two one, two. Okay, so let's have a go at doing all of the left hand for the first part. Remember, you've got these octave A's, and then you've got a B, C, E cluster chord, which comes with a B, C, E, then an E and a G. So in my head, I'm going to look at that as two white outers of the black F with the C sharp. C there. Third phrase, same as the first, then the ending that we just did. Let's go for it. We'll try it twice today, see how we get on. After two, octave phase, starting with the top note. One, two. So A's together, low A by itself, A's together. B, C and E with the B. A, low A by itself. actually is the same so we've done that already let's look at what chord we're starting off in we're going to go into the relative minor so we're going to go for that f sharp minor so we're starting off in a kind of darker feel okay c e e those that f chord we're having an f one five eight as i call it f is the number one two three four fifth note six seven and the eight so f sharp c sharp and f sharp makes up that F158 chord, or it's kind of an open chord. That's going to go note to note with the C, E, E. Have a listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty
So note to note. So F C F C E E. Let's try that. One, two. Let's go for it again. Reset. One, two. Second phrase, we're going to have a D chord. If you can though, I want you to try and make it a 1-5-10. So that means that your thumb, instead of going on the D chord, which you can do that if you want, that's a kind of more straightforward version, try stretching your thumb up to the F sharp. Just gives it a bit of a warmer feel. Let's try that. Same rhythm, so it goes note to note. One, two. So fourth finger in D, second in A, thumb try and get it up to that F sharp. If not, just go down to the D. One, two. Our third phrase, we have the F chord again. One, two. Great. Let's try that once through then. So we have F, C, F. D A F. So it's an F one five eight, a D one five ten, or a D one five eight if you want. Third phrase is the F one five eight again. Then we go to our ending, which is the same as what we had before. Okay, so we've actually done quite a lot already just by learning those two chords. Let's try it. One, two. Your D ten. some extra notes a little harmony okay so what's happening there is when we're going up three notes from F remember that happens three times we're going to take our left hand and we're going to go up three notes from the high A so that's a sixth apart six notes below A B and C so I want you to that add that in every time you go up from the F let's try from the start of that second part with all the left hand we've done so far one, two. D10. Harmony in, up from A. F chord again. And your ending. Great work. Let's go for it again. In fact, let's do it twice. But I'm going to tell you to stop playing along with me when we get to the third phrase for the repeat, because I'm going to do something different there. Have a listen. Or, yeah, play along with me until I say stop. After two. One, two. D chord. C, B, F chord. Your ending part, so D octave, C10, D octave, of the F chord. Harmony up from the A, D10, harmony. Now, let me play this bit by myself. Okay, so I'm choosing to move this on a little bit. This um, left hand has all been rather up high, okay? We're, we're keeping it up all, a lot of it sonically is up higher because in our right hand, the melody is going up higher. I like to do that on a lot of my arrangements. If the right hand goes up higher, I'll take the left hand up higher as well, just to kind of give that sonic variation so we're hearing things higher. What I'm doing here on the repeat in the third phrase is I'm starting to kind of introduce lower notes again to kind of 
get it brought round to the fact that we're about to return to the first part, which is all these octaves down there, keeping it low. So, on our third phrase, we are changing the left hand. First phrase, we have the F chord. Then with the D10. So this is the repeat. We're now instead going to go down to a B158. So that'll be a B, F sharp and a B, so a minor chord. Note to note. C, B, B. Now I'm not going to do my harmony because that's a big jump there. Instead, I'm going to play a passing note, a passing octave of a C sharp. Because that's going to bring us on to the ending. It's going to join things up. And I'm going to do it on the beat. Have a listen. So we have our B158, the C, E, E. When we hit the high A, we're going to have that C sharp. So when we hit the last note of the up three from it, that C sharp octave. And then your ending section. play that to you again. So we have the B158, note to note, C sharp octave, that's the passing octave. Okay, that only happens in the repeat. Okay, it's helping bring the tune back around to going, going uh, and playing it again. Yeah, so let's have a go at doing all of the second part and I'll shout out when it gets to that B chord, the variation. So, F chord and then the harmony. One, two. Up from A. D158. C, E, F chord. Harmony. Ending, keep that hand open so you can dab. Nice work. F chord. So B158, C sharp with a high A, and your ending. Great. All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can do the full tune, both hands together. Okay. Just to remind you what your first part was. You had those octave A's. You had your B C E cluster with the B C E in your right hand. And then you had your E and your G, the E third with the C sharp. Third phrase, same as the first. And your ending. Remember, you can do straight octaves if you want, or you can do the two versions here. D sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E straight octaves, or D octave, C sharp 10, D octave, and E and D making that both in E7. Okay, let's go for the full thing. Each part Twice. So A part, A part, B part, B part with the variation of the B chord. Okay, after two. One, two. So, listen, what we're going to do now is I'm going to um, pop in the video section that I played earlier that had Iona in it, so you can have a go of playing along again. Um, so that version is A part, A part, B part, B part, then I play it as a song, so just the A part ones, 
and the B part once so that Ona can join in. And I and then afterwards, stick around, press pause, go and sell, go and get yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you will. Um, and I'm gonna have a wee blither and tell you what I've been up to. So I hope you like that. Remember, head along to the website as well and get yourself a copy of the music. Cool. So here you go. Here's the original version that I did in front of the fireplace and Iona will join in soon. enjoyed learning that tune and um, I remember that you if you head on to the website harpathome.com you'll be able to purchase the sheet music for it and it's an instant pdf download there are instructions on how to get it but if you have any bother just send me an email info at rachelhere.com or send me a message on facebook and I'll get back to you about it and um, but hopefully you'll be able to manage it yourself um, and I be sure to check out Iona Fife I hope you enjoyed your singing this is her website and be sure to follow her on Facebook and things. So yes, so this wee section, I figured I might kind of put this in um, at the end of each video just to kind of chill out, have a wee cup of tea, got my sassy lassie mug today um, and have a wee blether. Blether is a kind of Scots word for a wee talk, a wee chit chat with you all. Um, so I'm currently in the city of Glasgow. This is where I live. I'm originally from the Scottish Highlands. I was born and brought up in the village of Ullapool, which is a beautiful fishing village in the northwest of the Highlands. But I've been living in Glasgow, goodness, I'm trying to think now, nearly, yeah, 19 years now, I think. I moved here um, to come here for university. As a family, I'm a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. My father is actually from Glasgow and my mother is from Antrim over in Northern Ireland. Um, but we grew up in the Highlands um, and we spent a couple of years in Edinburgh before I moved here to study in Glasgow. And I love Glasgow. Glasgow is a very Highland city. Um, there's a lot of Gaelic and there's just lots of Highlanders here. Great music in the city. It's a fantastic music, music place. There's always lots of gigs and sessions and things. Um, although I do say always, Currently, there's no gigs and no sessions because we're in the middle of this pandemic, but um, there are lots of um, musicians doing lots of stuff online. So I really do kind of encourage you to source out the Chad musicians from uh, Scotland and Ireland, etc., who are all kind of showing their rares online to you. So do kind of investigate it. And actually, that leads me on to um, a concert broadcast of myself, which is going online. That is happening on Sunday which is tomorrow, but this is going out on Monday. I need to get used to this, you see. So it will be online already for you to see. Um, I'll put a link to it. I'll share it on the page and I'll put a link in the comments um, or the blurb for this video. And it's uh, a wee kind of mini kind of showcase concert that myself and Ron Jaffe did. So if you don't know who Ron is, Ron is my duo guitarist, partner in crime, as it would be say. He is an acoustic guitarist from the northeast of Scotland. Um, but he lives along the road from me in Glasgow, which is very handy. And we, um, he's my kind of main performing person. So we travel a lot uh, doing tours. And this was a showcase kind of concert that we did a couple of years ago um, to uh, 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 festival organisers and promoters from New Zealand and Australia in the hope that they would pick us to go on tour in these places. And well, yeah, we did pretty well out of it. We actually were just in New Zealand for a month there in February and we were meant to go to Australia 
this uh, June for the National Celtic Festival, but we're hopefully going to manage to make that next year now. So anyway, I'm kind of blabbering on here. So basically this video um, is up online now, so have a listen to it. Um, it's, it's just kind of playing mostly old stuff now actually. Uh, now we've got new material, but it's uh, we had a blast at that concert. We knew lots of people actually in the audience. Um, so we did a total laugh. So it gives you a bit of a kind of clue of what we sound like. Um, so I'll put that in the in the links. Um, what else is kind of going on? It's been really busy actually. Um, I've had, it's been a bit of a strange time. Um, so obviously kind of work outside of these walls has been kind of cancelled or postponed, but a lot of it has actually gone online. Um, and I've been really thrilled that a lot of festivals have kind of been inspired by what we did at the virtual Edinburgh International Heart Festival. For those of you who don't know, we kind of uh, moved our festival online. We gave a bit of a taste of the festival. It wasn't the full festival. We gave kind of small gigs and small workshops. Um, but a lot of festivals have actually been inspired by that and are going all out for it. And they're putting the whole festival online. And it's really excited. And, Exciting. And a couple of the festivals that I was booked at to play in the US are doing that this year, um, including Somerset Folk Harp Festival and Common Ground in the Hill. And it's amazing what the organisers are doing. They're taking the whole thing and moving it online. I mean, I did the, I coordinated the Virtual Edinburgh International Harp Festival online and we only did a taster. And that was, that was a lot of work, but fair play to these organisers. So, I actually ended up having a lovely chat with Maureen. Now Maureen um, is kind of her job at Somerset is normally she does the stage management but she's great. I got on really well with Maureen. I roomed with her a few years ago at the festival and she loves coffee and if you know me you know that I love coffee so oh it was I was so pleased that I was rooming with her. She had the French press and the coffee beans and the grinder and every morning we had a amazing coffee so I'm really quite gutted I'm not seeing her in person this year for Somerset but I think we might have to have a kind of zoom session during the actual festival of drinking coffee but um, Maureen has a new podcast that she's just kind of launched um, and I had a wee chat with her last night actually so it's not on uh, my chat isn't online yet um, but it will be I think it's going on Thursday night or Friday night so I'll post it in the I'll post it in the blurb just now anyway, but I'll talk a little bit more about it next time after next workshop. So yeah, so that's been happening. Um, but mainly my time right now has been kind of taken up by doing my own workshops that I would have been teaching at these festivals. Um, Somerset, Common Ground, kind of planning that one. Somerset, I'm actually filming them just now, which is exciting. And also for the Heart Gathering in Ohio, I'm doing a workshop for them. So yeah, it's been kind of talking to cameras, which, yeah, I think I'm getting quite good at. And it's just great to see these uh, festivals taking advantage um, of still connecting with their folk through the internet. So, yeah, and what else have I been doing? Um, it's been glorious weather in Glasgow, which has kind of been a little bit, it's, oh, it's been a bit tortured, to be honest, because it would be amazing to kind of be going outside and kind of, you know, sunbathing sitting out having a drink or having a coffee in the park but we're obviously not allowed to do that um, but we thankfully we have big windows that we're able to open in, the, in our apartment so we're kind of been opening them and kind of imagining that we're outside in a glorious park somewhere so that's what we've kind of been doing and yeah been playing lots of harps sorting all these workshops which i um, thank you all for watching them and um, if you've got this far you're a total star um, and yeah, that's been about it. So thank you for listening and I hope you've enjoyed the first workshop. Please do tell other folk about it. Um, as I say, I'm just going to be teaching a lot of my favourite tunes. Um, if you have any questions to ask, let me know because um, I'll be able to maybe answer them in this kind of blether section. We'll see how this goes. And yeah, share the workshops, tell others about it and keep safe as um, we've kind of been saying amongst my harping friends keep what is it um keep healthy keep hand washing hand sanitizing and harping so happy harping and yeah i'll see you next week cheers mm -hmm.